Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Clouser, and welcome back to the Journey of My Mother's Son podcast. Yeah, I'm joined with Stacy Shiflett, who's the CEO and founder of Modern Consciousness. Stacy, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Dan. It's great to be here. Absolutely. I, I should say thanks for joining me again because this is uh, this is Dan and Stacy 2.0. Because uh, <laughs> the the beauty of podcasting on the road is sometimes you don't have great internet connection and we did a great podcast about a month ago and when i went to edit it it was just on my end terrible so well <laughs> i we actually this one's gonna be excited better. to be able to connect with you again and then we're going to connect later in sarasota florida when you visit correct absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> looking forward to that so before we get started though just you know stacy introduce yourself to the audience you know who is stacy today yeah, so you know, I'm I uh, I am an entrepreneur. I am um, what do, what do I call myself? I'm a very adept student at life, and I've done many many things. I've been in many different industries, and uh, I had a divorce. I divorced after a 28 year marriage. Um, oh gosh, in 2012 now, so that really set me off on a path of personal development like I had never done before. Um, I actually am the queen of reinvention, I am told. I have reinvented myself a number of times over the years, um, been in many different industries, and uh, you know, we can pretty much do anything that we set our minds to when we believe it. Yeah, I love that. And that's one of the reasons why initially, you know, when we first connected, I really wanted to have you on the show because, you know, when you talk about, you know, it's never too late to reinvent yourself, obviously, you know, for a guy who walked away from an organization that he founded and ran for 30 years, um, sold his house, jumped in an RV and traveled across the country and, you know, really reinventing myself, um, you know, to use my words, both written and verbal, uh, in a more powerful way than what I was even doing before. Um, it really resonated with me on the, the whole, you know, it's never too late to reinvent yourself. So, you know, want to talk a little bit about that in detail. Um, I know you've gone through a couple, you know, iterations of Stacy throughout yes. your lifetime. <laughs> Several lifetimes, yes. <laughs> you know, so so tell me about, you know, let, let's start with the the first reinvention of of Stacy. You know, tell me a little bit about, you know, what brought that on and, you know, if you embraced it at first or if you if you fought it off. Well, you know, I, I never really realized until the last few years how powerful the value of self-actualization was for me. So um, I pretty much like to do things my way and always have, much to the consternation of my parents at times to times, but they always supported me. And uh, I guess the first, you know, I went to work at 16 years old and, and I surprised my parents when I came home and told them that I had gotten a job. And uh they were also surprised in my junior year because of high school, because the principal's office called them. And uh, it wasn't that I was in trouble. They called to say, do you realize that your daughter came into our office today and she wants to graduate high school a year early? I hated high school. So we made that happen. I had all my credits and um, I was in the restaurant business for a while. I, you know, I've waited tables and tended bars and managed bars and, uh, my parents were teetotalers, so that was a little bit of a surprise to them. And I actually quit college uh, because I was making money. I thought I was making good money at the time. And even at a ver very early age, I had a lot of confidence. Um, you know, I remember, oh gosh, probably, you know, I guess I might have been about 22, maybe. And I walked into a bar that I knew I had, I had been there. It was in my, at the town I was living in at that time and walked in and walked up to the manager, asked for the manager, sat down at the bar and said, Hey, I can help you make more money here. You're losing money because you're not charging enough. And um, he looked at me and said, how do you know that? And I said, well, I just, I know the industry. I know your business. And uh, he hired me on the spot. And indeed, we did uh, we did increase the revenue of that business. And from there, um, when I got married originally in 1983, I decided I need to get an office job. So uh, that wasn't the easiest thing to do at the time. Having only hospitality 
business experience. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't really revered in that day and age, right? It wasn't really a respected career choice uh, back in the, um, in the late seventies and the, in the early eighties. So I got an office job with a, a woman that my mother knew at church and um, doing some basic bookkeeping and a little bit of, a little bit of typing. I knew, I knew how to do both of those things. She was a government contractor, a small government contractor firm. And within a year of going to work with her being completely new to computers, completely new to the entire industry, I rolled out all of the first, I'm going to date myself, but I rolled out all of the first IBM PC XT desktop computers throughout the Department of Health and Human Services. So um, that was a huge reinvention. <laughs> And from there, uh, I I worked my way up. I got another job at some point in as a help desk operator in the in the world of federal government acquisition and procurement. It was a company that did procurement software. And I don't know, 10 years in into that career, 10, 12 years, maybe, um, I became a subject matter expert. I became known as a subject matter expert. People sought me out. I didn't seek other people out. And that particular invention of myself uh, culminated in doing an acquisition of a $50 million software company without investing a penny. So um, yeah, that was really interesting. <laughs> so cool. So you know, it's funny because society, you know, kind of tells us that there's this, this certain path we're supposed to follow. You know, we're supposed to go to school, we're supposed to get our degree, and then you you know, kind of work in the same career your your entire life and you stay in the same place and you, you know, you grow roots and and yada, yada, yada. Um, and that was something that I, I had believed um, for a long time as well, quite frankly. Um, but I, I definitely don't believe that that's the, the route for everybody nowadays. Um, and obviously, you know, if you being in, in multiple careers, uh, multiple shifts, multiple changes. Um, what do you say to those people who are out there telling our, our youth that, you know, there's one path to success that, you know, you, you get a four year degree, you end up putting yourself in a huge amount of debt and then, you know, God help you. If you don't like the, the career choice that you made at, 18 or 19 years old <laughs> to get that degree. And then you find out it's not for you. Yeah. You know, for the, for the youth today, I think, you know, I think what I would tell them is that do what you love. Right. And there are so many opportunities today and so many ways to earn a living. And there's so many ways to gain notoriety, notoriety that we didn't have when I was growing up. Right. Because we have, the internet, we have social media, um, we have cable TV, you know, we didn't have cable TV <laughs> when I was growing up either. I remember when cable TV uh, first came out. So I think if you look at the variety of professions and you see people today that are very successful, you can, um, you know, I, I, I can't remember the name of the show, but there was a show on cable. It was a uh, a guy and his son, an older guy and his son, and they they did custom motorcycles. I'm not remembering the name of the show right now, but they became top in their field, right? They have waiting lists to build these custom bikes. Um, we see that today with, you know, hairdressers and makeup artists or, you know, any any number of careers, you know, even gamers, right, can can make really, really good money. So follow your passion and and what you love to do because what society prescribes are beliefs and each generation likes to encourage the next to do better, right? To do even better. And we all operate from our own set of beliefs and what we believe to be true and generally with very good intentions, but uh, it doesn't always work out that way. So um, I think question everything. I've always questioned everything. It's just a natural tendency for me. It can be a little annoying, I guess, at times uh, for some when I was growing up. But um, yeah, I, and just believe in yourself. I mean, who would think that 
someone like myself with no no money at the time it what it what you know we were a middle class family doing well but you know doing pretty well but who would think that i could have an idea to acquire a company that was selling at a 50 million dollar price tag and go after that deal and put that deal together without having any experience in mergers and acquisitions without um without having any cash right they called me a cashless investor and it turned in you know i made it happen it took me 9 months was laughed at a lot i pulled in a partner um that did have an mba because i had no degree so i knew nobody was going to take me seriously so i pulled in a partner on the deal that had his mba and he had some merger and acquisition experience and we did it. So don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't do something. Yeah. I love that. And that's such important advice, you know, because the, uh, I heard, I heard a guy once say, you know, su su surround yourself with people who say, you know, why not instead of why, when, mm -hmm. when you get that crazy idea, you know, and it is. I mean, you can come up with a whole plethora of reasons why not to do something, you know, um, and you just got to focus on, you know, the things that, that are good about that decision, the things that go right. We always focus on, you know, what if this happens? What if this bad thing happens? What if this bad thing happens? When the truth is, you know, there's a whole lot of good that can happen with every decision that we make as well. And we just really need to focus on that more so than focusing on what's, you know, what's going to happen if it all blows up, you know, mm -hmm. and, and things do blow up sometimes. Right. And, and, you know, we call it failing forward, right. That we, we take the lessons, we, you know, we, we learn from it and we move forward and we shouldn't let it crush us. And, you know, on that point as well, you know, I've also had some hardships um, in my life. My first son, for example, died and, you know, I call that experience, you know, going to hell and I was lucky to come back out of it, but we do so in those circumstances, you know, whether it's divorce, a loss of a loved one or what have you, um, you know, we do have to grieve and grieve properly and we have to process all of that. But the thing is to move through those experiences and not stay rooted in the negativity of them. Um, because some experiences just really aren't that much fun. So absolutely. Absolutely. And and when you're going through those experiences, you know, it, it's tough to, you know, in the middle of the storm sit there and say, well, boy, what are the lessons I'm gonna learn from this? You know, like it's just <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. But once you get through the storm, if you're able to reflect and then look at what you know the lessons you learn through that storm, I think is what makes us grow as individuals for sure. It is. And I, I, and I think that those with the desire to continue growing and invest in themselves um, for their own personal development, whether that's, you know, through reading or hiring a coach or, you know, some need therapy, you know, to work with, you know, when you're not sure what to do, working with someone can help lift you up. It has to be the right person right? It has to be someone that you connect with. But I think learning to really connect with yourself and being able to listen to your inner guidance and intuition, even before you really know what that is, right? Like buying that software company, I just, I literally woke up one day and said, I I need to reach out to these people and, and I want to buy this company, you know? And was the same way that I moved to Sarasota, Florida. I literally woke up one morning. I had I went from that software company to a construction company in DC, built four and five story apartment buildings as a framing contractor. So there's yet another reinvention. Um, I closed that down pretty much 2020. I think we might have had a little bit of work in early 2021. Um, before I started this business, but in that time frame, it's when I decided to move to Sarasota and it was the same thing for me. I woke up one morning and said, I need to move to Sarasota, Florida. I had to look on a map, figure out where it was. Uh, I don't, I'm from Florida, but I don't recall ever being there even as a child. And, um, within two weeks I was on a plane. I had a realtor. I was in Sarasota, Florida, and I put a contract on a house because I felt 
I felt that strongly guided for that move. So um, sometimes we just have to listen to ourselves and, and believe in ourselves. You know, we have to base it a little bit in reality, but um, we can take calculated risks and go from there. So tell me a little bit more about that, you know, going from, you know, running a, you know, framing contracting business to, you know, what you're doing now with modern consciousness, because of, of all your shifts that, that seems almost like one of the more drastic ones. This has been a very drastic, <laughs> very drastic change. It's, it's a, you know, it's a non-traditional business, right? It's a completely different business model and not one that I had any experience with. And so again, the idea for this company, um, how this all started, I, you know, I did a, a lot of my own personal development work, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm well in over a decade into that now. And, um, the catalyst for that was, was my divorce and everything looked good on the outside, but I really wasn't doing well on the inside. Right. So I, I, I realized that and decided that my life was not going to evolve organically. Not that it had ever done before, but somehow sometimes we have a belief, but we forget, you know, we still think that belief is in, is working for us. And it wasn't really working for me at that time. I've, So I had to, I had to regroup internally. Right. And um, anyway, throughout that process, I had this vision and it came to me through meditation for this company. And the name came to me, the, my modern consciousness formula came to me and uh, I just couldn't shake it. Right. The idea simply would not leave me alone. And and I resisted it for a couple of years for a number of reasons. For one, I was approaching 65. I'm 66 now. And I'm like, I don't know that I want to start another business at this age. It's a business model I know nothing about. Right. So I was I was resisting it. And um, so I again, I was meditating one day and I finally I said, OK, fine. I said, you know, universe, you're not going to, you're not leaving me alone about it. I mean, I, I felt like an obsessed person, right? It, it was on my mind daily. So I said, what do I need to do to do this? What do you need me to do to do this? Because obviously I'm called to do this. So the guidance that came in was one word and it was just right. I was like, okay, I've heard that before, but the difference this time was that I surrendered to it. I said, okay, I surrender. I will write. And within an hour, two tops, I had a text message from a friend of mine that said, hey, I've got a a friend that's a publisher, a book publisher in Canada, and she's doing an anthology book with Les Brown. And it's called Ignite the Hunger in You. And she has a spot available. Would you like to jump on the, you know, would you like me to introduce her to you to be a part of the book? So, you know, I kind of rolled my eyes up to the sky and said, Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> because how do you say no, right? It that was the guidance I received. I followed it. And and I think that is important. We have to take action, right? We talk so much these days about manifest this and manifest that, but you have to you have to take action and you have to take the steps. And sometimes blindly, right? You take a step before the next step appears. So um in the process of, of that book was when I realized, hmm, I could launch a company in conjunction with the book launch. So that's what I did. And I, I set about doing all the stuff I call infrastructure, right? The website and, you know, all the, all the business things that I knew that I knew how to do at that time. And then it's growing from there. So that's, that's how I am where I am now. Yeah. And so tell me, you know, what type of clients are actually coming to you and, and what are they looking for? to, you know, get out of a relationship with you as a coach? Yeah. You know, my favorite clients, um, I, I mostly work with, I, I have been reach out as well, but I mostly work with successful women and, um, generally they have done, my favorite clients are the ones that have probably already done some personal development work, right. In that, they have developed some level of self-awareness. Um, they have 
you know, if they have had trauma, which I had as well with my divorce, they're not in the midst of a crisis with that, right? They're coming out on the other, on the other side of that, because there's a lot of processing that has to, to happen there, but it's kind of when their light bulb comes on that not dissimilar to my, um, to my own experience that, wow, I've really, I've really got to do something about this and I can create my path forward. So those, those are, those are my favorite clients. And, um, I'll tell you just a little bit about what I call the the aspects of modern consciousness. There are four. So the first one is the automaton 2.0 and, and, and it's a very good stage for us because we have to learn everything, right? We come into this world helpless. We really have to learn everything. And I actually call it automaton 2.0 to honor where we are today, because we've already come through a lot of iterations of ourselves, right? we made career choices. We made family choices. Um, you know, a lot, just so many choices along the way, but we tend to run on autopilot. And what happens there is the momentum of your life is actually what's pushing you forward rather than intentional decisions, right? On which direction you want to go. And and again, a lot of times the intentions are good. We might enroll the kids in soccer or dance, you know, but our schedules are very, very hectic and we're not ever really present with what we're doing. We're just thinking about the next thing and we're, you know, we keep moving forward. So what I find generally propels people out of that aspect is the question, gosh, is this, it's either frustration, um, a big life changing event. um, And they start to ask, you know, this can't be all there is because to your point earlier about what society teaches us, they think, you know, I've done everything I'm supposed to do but I'm still not happy and fulfilled internally. So that pushes them into what I call the awakening soul, which is a period of exploration and uh, a deeper understanding of self, a deeper understanding of, you know, the human condition, you know, how our brains work, so on and so forth. So, but you definitely have an inner knowing that, that there can be more. And so I like to work with people that are in that phase as well as in the next aspect, which I call illuminated adept. And those are people that have really mastered some skills. You know, they have a pretty good level of self-awareness. Um, they can catch things at this point. They go, Oh, where'd that thought come from? You know, nope, don't not really liking that one too much. And they'll, they'll ponder it. And that really, they really begin to live from a place of awareness and they have mastery of things like emotional regulation, you know, for the most part, you know, the universe never tires of giving us lessons. So there's always, there's always more to master. Um, And then the final aspect of, of modern consciousness is, is a transformer. And that's really when you step into creating a broader impact in your world, it doesn't have to be the whole world, but within your world and everybody you touch. So I think the awakening souls and the illuminated adepts, those are really my favorite clients. A lot of people do a lot of work in personal development. They have the knowledge, but they don't apply the knowledge and they don't apply it because they don't know how you go to these seminars and um, you get very excited and you're really ramped up and you learn some things, but then you're left not knowing how to practically implement that into your life. And that's where I come in with, um, you know, with my, uh, I call it an ascension model and, and, and I coach people through that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And, you know, again, it is funny how people, you know, as they're going through these changes, they just, you know, a lot of times, like you said, they're not sure how to implement it. They, you know, they have an understanding of what's going on, but, they're really not sure how to put it into motion. So that's really what you're doing is helping them put it into motion. Correct. It is. And you know what, what I find out um, what I have found is that, you know, we evaluate and assess so many things in our lives, right? We go to the dentist once a year, you know, we, we monitor the, the performance of our business, the performance of our employees you know, how well our kids are doing in school, you know, we take the car in for routine maintenance, you know, just whatever. But what we end up doing, what I find a lot of people end up doing is we're looking at segments of our life. We never really look at 
at it as a whole. So the first, um, the first module in the program that I work through people, and although I do have predefined modules, the experience for everybody is different uh, because everybody's life is different. And uh, I do a full life assessment, right? So we go in and look at every aspect of our lives, of their life. And the reason we do that is because, you know, there are themes in our lives and they show up differently in different aspects of our lives. It can be the same theme, but we're not really linking the two together. So we do an assessment. Um, we go through each area of life as well to define what your aspirations are, which is another really unique um, outcome because people really don't know what they aspire to be anymore, right? You think about what you want to be when you're when you're young and choosing your career or whatnot, but we don't really think about those things. Um, a lot of people don't think about those things as we age. Then we architect the bridge, which is how are we going to close that gap? And that's that's really where we do a lot of the thematic work. And, uh, you know, I could give you a great example of someone that, uh, you know, a very successful entrepreneur, female entrepreneur, and, you know, she's just not getting the traction that she had hoped in her business. And, you know, she's put it, these are all common problems, right? Uh, problems, uh, they're symptoms, really. So, you know, putting on some weight, she doesn't really want to hire anybody because her business isn't performing as well as she thinks she the, that it could. But, when we elevate that up, and that is the name of my program, Elevate Your Life, as we elevate that up and look at a 50,000 foot view, which is what I help do, and I'm actually um, very good at it. That's one of the things that uh, helped me in my technical career, right? I was very, very good at looking at the big picture. You know, we found found themes of, um, you know, just uh, indulgences, Right. So indulging in food. So there was a, there was a lack of a lack of focus. So indulging in food, indulging in too much luxury spending. Right. So when we start to bring those things into our awareness and make some tweaks on it, you know, you're not necessarily seeing how one area is impacting the other. Um, another interesting thing with that client is that um, she believed that she was very focused and very disciplined because she always had been. But when we really looked at it, discipline, she didn't understand why she wasn't doing well because she's so disciplined, but discipline wasn't actually showing up for her in her life today. So those are the kinds of things we uncover. And then we activate them and then we align them in your life with some very practical steps to move you in the direction of your aspirations. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Stacey, so we covered a lot of different topics. Um, is there anything that we missed that you think uh, would be beneficial to the listeners? You know, I, I had this jotted down from when we met before, and it's, I don't know if it's what your mom said or what you said, but when many little people in many little places do many little things, then the whole world changes. And that's really what modern consciousness is also about, right? I think it starts within. And as we grow, we affect those closest to us. And then we, you know, it, it expands out into our organizations, our workplaces and society at, at, at a whole at some point. So I had that jotted down from when we met before and I've got goosebumps reading it. I just love that quote. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is, that we'll, uh, we'll get, we'll get back to that here and here shortly. Cause it's always my final question. Um, and, and it really, it really tends to that, that ripple effect, you know, you really, you know, I think the more positivity you can put out there, um, the the better it makes the world. Because even just one interaction with one person that that is positive for them, then they go on and interact with one or two people, and it just kind of again creates this huge ripple effect. And I I don't think people really grasp that as much as they should. That like it's more than just about that one on one connection because. I'm going to walk away and I'm going to interact with more people and you're going to walk away and you're going to interact with more people. And if we both gave each other positive energy, we're going to transmit that to everybody else that we interact with throughout that day. And I think more and more people really need to focus on truly the fact that what we do is so much bigger than, than what we think it is. You know, it is just so much bigger than just this conversation that you and I are having 
and you know the listeners who are out there listening to it it's you know every way that they're going to interact with others throughout their day after they've listened to this interview you know and I, I think that's something that we really need to start grasping more as a society that it it isn't just about us it's about it's so much bigger than us Absolutely. I think, you know, we have to keep our awareness. We have to, you know, we have to keep our compassion for others on point. We have to realize the impact that our language has on others and being present, you know, so as I said earlier, so often we're not really present. I have a blast in the grocery store because I am fully present grocery shopping, right? I've, I've, my assistant has commented to me on that, right? She's heads down looking at what to do. And I'm, you know, I'm dancing down the aisles and having a good old time why not? That's what I'm doing is grocery shopping. So be present with it in it and enjoy it. You know, I'm, I'm not thinking about the six other things I have to do that day. Yeah. Yeah. So, so important. So important. Stacey, how do people find you if they want to reach out to you, um, engage you for your coaching or just, you know, look in a little deeper as to, to what you're doing with modern consciousness, where can they find you on the internet? Yeah, I'm guessing you'll have it in the show notes. My my website is modernconsciousness.com and my business social both on Facebook and Instagram is Modern Consciousness. And you can reach me by email if you email me at empower at aware.life. And it's L-I-F-E. It's a four character extension. So um that was another cool thing, right? I got I got the URL aware.life. I was guided to go look for that. And I got it. How do you, how do you find those things? Right? So, <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> so Stacey, that does bring me to our, our final question, which we've talked about a little bit uh, already. Um, as you know, we've already talked the subtitle of this podcast is many little people in many little places, which comes from the opening lyrics of that Michael Fronte song, Gloria which go when many little people in many little places do many little things and the whole world changes. So what is one of the little things that Stacy does on a daily basis to make the world a little bit better place? You know, I, I smile at everybody. And uh, I, I think that just that act is great. You know, I'm, I'm friendly to people. I smile and as you said, when we talk, chatted just a minute ago, just spread a little bit of, you know, a little bit of joy. I, if somebody's grouchy, I don't take it personally, right? If it's the checkout at the grocery store, you know, maybe she's had a bad day. Maybe she just lost the love of her life. Maybe, maybe she was planning on, you know, leaving work 10 minutes ago and she got called to stay late and now can't have dinner with her family. So I think it's being open and compassionate and present, smiling, be, be a pleasant person, right? We take ourselves everywhere we go. So do you want to go around with a grouch or do you want to go hang out with somebody that's pleasant, right? And that's us. So I, I think do that as much as possible. Yeah. I love it. That's a great answer. And, and that, you know, that answer is probably one of the more common answers I get of just smile to people, you know, a smile, a smile and a wave, something like that. And it does go so far because you, you know, you never know, like I said, that person could be having a terrible day and just that little interaction again of you smiling or giving them a little wave can, you know, totally brighten their day and change, you know, the direction of where their day is going, you know, just by giving them that po that positive energy as well. So I love that answer. And, uh, you know, I, I could sit and talk with you for, for quite some time. Uh, and I think we will probably end up doing that a little bit when we get to Sarasota. And I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, for folks out there listening, be sure to check out my other podcasts and blogs at journeymymotherson.com. Are there, pick up a copy of one of my books and once again, Stacy, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to redo this podcast. I think this one definitely came out. The other one was was really good. This one is uh, is even better. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, it's a joy to be here, and I do look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> right, you bet. 